September 11th, 2001 it was an important day, a, a meaningful day, a memorable day. It was such a big day because that was the day that our daughter Jessie was to begin dance lessons in this very room. Now, I know that's not why you remember 9-11-2001. I know that's not why the world remembers that day. It was because of the violence, the death, the devastation. And 21 years later, we take a moment to to honor, to remember the lives that were lost that day, the families that were dealt such a devastating blow and changed forever. We feel that in our hearts, we know that. We take a moment to remember that. You remember where you were on 9-11, I'm sure. You remember what it felt like, the disorientation, the, the anger. And in those days after 9-11, we had some time to, to think about how are we going to respond to this? What are we going to, what are we going to do? What's the, what's the proper response? And a lot of that was really visceral, like anger, right? Pain. Like you hit me, I'm going to hit you. you. You strike at me, I'm going to strike back. And it was about a month later that the bombing campaign over Afghanistan began. And around a year and a half later till we entered into the war in Iraq, and there was time in, that, in those windows to think about how should we respond and what should we do. And in church life, there was a lot of, of thought about how does a Christian respond? What is a Christian reaction? And there was a lot of talk and attention about just war theory. When is it okay to engage in war? When you're trying to prevent the loss of greater life, when you're engaging in violence for the, for the protection of a greater good, right? And that's kind of where most theologies came out, and, and it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It makes sense to me. And yet, at the same time, there's a, there's a part of me both then and now that also feels like the realization that that might be a response that's needed in the short term, but in the long run, we're never going to kill our way out of divisions. Repaying violence for violence is never going to lead us to peace, even though it's sometimes is the necessary option. And so this, there's this wrestling that goes on, I think, in the, in the Christian world, in the hearts and lives of people. And back then and now, I think a relevant question is that, that famous phrase, what would Jesus do? WWJD. And then I asked the question, what did Jesus do? WDJD, because Jesus lived in a time of violence. Jesus lived in a time where, where there was wars and separations and divisions and hatred, all the same things that we live with now. And what did he do? And when I look at the life of Jesus, he doesn't seem to enter into that. He seems to have his eyes on the prize of something much higher than that. He didn't talk about war and when it's okay and when it's not. He didn't want to lead a rebellion. He didn't want to change the politics. He, he didn't enter into any of that. His eyes and his vision were on something greater than that. So then and now, I and I think many of us have this wrestling. Well, how are we to understand the words of Jesus but yet live in the reality of the, of the world that we live in? And what do we do with that? And how do we make sense of these two different things? In the aftermath of 9-11, I talked with my brother who was a captain in the Navy. And we talked about possible responses and military actions and so forth. And I asked him, I said, well, I got to talk in church on Sunday. What am I supposed to say to people in church? To which he laughed because he doesn't go to church, right? But he said something I thought was pretty wise. He said, you know what? However, we're going to respond in the weeks and months ahead. That's out of your hands. People are going to make those decisions, right? But what you can do is have an influence where you are and have an influence in creating a, a, a more healthy and connected environment in lessening the, the violence and division that happens between people. His, his advice is really to focus on what you control in your realm right now. I thought that was pretty smart. You know, because in, in terms of what we do as a nation in the midst of big questions, we can vote and advocate and do all those things that are really important to, to help push our communal life in the direction we think it should go. 
but also we can realize, man, our influence, our real influence in life is very close by. It's in our homes, it's in our communities, it's in our, in our schools, in our workplace. And how can we have an impact there? You know, after 9-11, there was a lot of tears, wasn't there? I had a lot of tears. I'm sure you had a lot of tears too. Tears for the brokenness, tears for the pain, tears for the rupturing of the world as we sort of understood it then. Just the tears flowed and they flowed because our hearts were broken. We had a real broken heartedness. And the thing about a broken heart is it can, it can harden or it can heal. It can heal or it can harden with bitterness and anger and cynicism and despair. But I hope what we find is the healing of brokenheartedness. And I think one of the things that helps us to heal more than anything else, what heals a broken heart, perhaps better than anything, is beauty. And I feel like I learned a lesson about this after 9-11. In those days that followed, I went between my office trying to do some work while being really distracted and then like slipping home to watch TV for a little bit, right? Because back then I couldn't watch TV in my office. But going back and forth between these two things and trying to see what was going on. And one afternoon as I was leaving, I was, it was just an early evening and I was leaving to go home. And I was walking down the hallway in our church, but in our sanctuary is over here. And out of that sanctuary door, I heard this music coming. And it was the music of a children's choir that was practicing. And when I heard those kids' voices, it was like a, it was like a magnet. It just sucked me to that door. I went and leaned them with my back on the side of that door. They couldn't see me, but I was just laying there, like letting their songs, letting their voices, letting their music wash over me. And it was like I could literally feel in my body. I could feel those voices bringing me back to life, bringing my spirit back to life, bringing energy into my body. Such a powerful thing that beauty can heal a broken heart. You know, without beauty in our lives and in our world, our hearts can turn to stone. Beauty is so important. Viktor Frankl, who lived through the Holocaust and, and wrote shortly after his liberation, wrote something that really struck me. He said they were on a train between Bavaria and Auschwitz. And these prisoners on the train, he said, if you could see their faces, you wouldn't believe that they were people in the circumstances that they were in, in these such dire circumstances, because their faces had joy upon them. Because on that train, through the slits in the doors, they were looking at the sunset over the Bavarian Alps. And that sunset over those mountains was so beautiful, it touched them, it touched their hearts, even in that difficult place. And he talked about how prisoners would often silently kind of motion really subtly to one another to, to look at the sunset between the trees or, or to a flower or to something that was beautiful because that beauty kept them alive. Without beauty, the light slips out of our hearts and our hearts can fade to black. And that darkness would threaten to consume all of us. The people who flew planes into buildings on 9-11, they, they had lost touch with beauty in their lives. They had lost touch with it. If beauty is in your heart, there's hope of a better way, hope of a bright tomorrow. In the scripture, there's a scripture where Paul writes to the church in Rome, and he writes them of what it means to look like a Christian. It's a beautiful passage, but at the end of it, there's one line I just wanted to highlight for you just for a moment. And the line is this. It says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Some of our response to the violence and darkness in our world is to bring beauty, is to bring goodness, is to bring light, is to bring love, because that is more powerful than anything else. So let us all become warriors of goodness in our world, bringing that light and bringing that love. Because some people want to take the beauty away. But you know what? I'm here in a dance studio and nobody takes that beauty away. Those dance lessons, they didn't stop on 9-11, 2001. They paused for a moment, but they started back up and they're still going yet today. So I just wanna wrap up with some words that I shared 21 years ago in church and I wanna share them today. I said this, 
We have seen the face of evil among us. Let us become the face of love. We have seen people among us who would tear us apart, but let us be the people who would heal the wounds of others. We have seen those among us who would tear down buildings, but let us be those who can rebuild lives. We have seen those among us who would set fire to our cities, but let us be the kind of people who rise from the ashes. We have seen those among us who are willing to die as they kill others, but let us be those who are willing to lay down our lives in the service of all people. We have seen those among us who would break the hearts of a nation. Let us be the people who mend the brokenhearted. We've seen people who would turn themselves into bombs, but let us become instruments of peace. We have seen those who would turn children into orphans, but let us be those who, turn, who, who take children and hold them in our arms. Yeah. Let us be those people. Because the buildings were burning on September 11th, but those fires, they've been put out. There's been more fires, they've been put out. There'll be more fires in the future. They will be put out because we will overcome evil with good. We will teach kids to dance in places like this. We will make beauty in our world. Yeah. Those dance lessons weren't stopped and they never will be because you and I will work to ensure that in our world, we overcome evil with good. <laughs>